A few days ago, I received an offer to study medicine at University of Malaya. That one was awkward. Oh, this is Xiaoyue. I'm going to unbox my UN status of application now. I apply for medicine, so let's see. A letter. Ditawakan tempat. Oh my god! I have some sort of brain lag right now, but I processed it. And I'm gonna start from my journey to this medical school instead of answering the why medicine question in a, in such when my brain is not out of the brain lag state. Okay, so how did I get here? Um, I studied at Sri KL when I was. Oh, <laughs> I studied in Sri KL in my high school. Sri KL was my high school. Oh my god, what is wrong with my phrasing? And okay, after Sri KL, when I did my IGCSEs, I did I went to Sunway and did my A levels. And after A levels, I after I finished my A levels in June, I applied to UM, and through the Satu channel. And I took the UCAT in order to get into UM, but usually you have to take what's called the MSAT, which is for like the admissions test for UM specifically. But what happened is that I did not take the MSAT because by the time I realized that I wanted to do medicine, the MSAT registration was already over, so I had to take the UCAT instead. So for medicine entry, there are two channels. First is UPU, and first is at. First is UPU and second is Satu. UPU is for people who took SPM. Like actually, if you took six SPM subjects and above, you can apply to UPU. But I applied to Satu because I didn't take six SPM subjects. I only took two, which is BM and Sejarah. So if you want to apply to a government uni, make sure that you have these two subjects to get the SPM cert. And what happened is I actually didn't know I wanted to study medicine before this. And what changed my mind actually was because, um, I, all along I always thought, should I do law or medicine? Because in high school I really really like debate and public speaking, so I thought that law was the general path that debaters go into, and I just I didn't really know much about law. I was very inspired by Lee Kuan Yew, and he studied law as well. So I thought, oh, I can do law and go into politics, which is. Quite a distant dream, and it may still happen. Who knows? But that was my number one goal in high school. But things changed when I got into A levels because I took science subjects to keep my options available, keep my options open. So, <clears throat> and ended up taking bio, chem, and maths. And at the middle of A levels, I actually thought of dropping out. I mean, like dropping out from my current class, and go to a different intake, and take history, econs, maths, and English literature. I actually consulted my teachers about this, and I actually went to the directors to see if it's possible, and it was possible. But I decided to stick with it, and through that, I I had to like you know in order to push through A levels, I had to love learn how to love my subjects. Cause I at the time I felt like bio and chem and maths like they just weren't really inspiring me and also I did quite badly at them lah to be honest at the first few months so I felt like no matter how much I uh make effort how much effort I make it's just not paying off and I felt like it's not the right field for me though after that I had to set my mind down on it create my study group. AKA my emotional support system as well, and then、uh, work from then on, and I started to like the sciences. I don't know if it's because I tricked my brain into liking it, but I ended up enjoying it a lot. <laughs> also because I watched Oppenheimer lah. Oppenheimer is about physics, but、uh, it made me like thinking and science, the discovery of the human potential and. The universe. Oh my God! Look at the you. Oh, look at oh, look at the sunsets. 
it's not even satin yet, but you know, it's beautiful. Just like you. Ha. <gasps> uh, and okay, where was I? Okay. So that's why I started out finding that I like sciences. And from then on, I thought, ooh, okay, why not medicine? So in the beginning of this year, I went to this event called MADE 2024. Making an informed decision is by MMI Young Medics. If you are not following their Instagram and you wish to study medicine, you should definitely follow their Instagram. I'm not part of their community, but you know, just saying. <laughs> it might give you a spark as well. So I went for MADE and it was held at UKM this year. And we got to go to the UKM hospital, uh, UKM, uh, faculty, medicine faculty, and they invited speakers, medical students, to speak about the medicine journey. And you know, like just bonding with people who are so bright, and uh, who love bio, who love medicine, really just <coughs> gave <coughs> gave me the spark as well. <laughs> Yeah, so I really like the community and friends I made there. And when we went to UKM, right, we had this time, we had this anatomy museum. Uh, yeah, anatomy museum. And there was a cadaver on the table, where which is actually like a hu a new, a real, <laughs> a real human, but they preserved it by chemicals. I know this is the most basic description <laughs> but I don't know enough about how they preserve it to say <laughs> so uh, preserve cadaver for medical students uh. so you can actually see their arteries their veins their muscle each layer and you can see their rib cage and everything and I just thought like looking at everything in the anatomy museum there was also like fetus there was also hearts and different organs with different kind of um who have different kind of illnesses so like if there's a tumor you can see the tumor inside this glass and this organ that has the tumor oh my god i'm at a loss for words but you can visualize it and when i went inside i was like whoa i was mesmerized in the most non-creepy way um i was mesmerized that like how how this entire med 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 <laughs> med <laughs> Medical world is involving, okay, it's like, we are all part of the same, we all have the same purpose. That is, we get to learn from these people with different sorts of illnesses. Then we are all learning in this community on how to use the past to treat people of the present and future. So I, th I feel like, Wow, I was really, really mesmerized by this. And that I think that was my wow moment, like my who, you know? Suddenly you feel like, damn, I want to study medicine. That was how I felt when I went to this event. After that, I went to AIM, which is a, an insight into medicine, hosted by UM students. And I think that's where my link to UM came because I was the AIM amb ambassador to Sunway College. Meaning like I get I got to talk to some UM people and also we when we went to the UM campus for the AIM physical event, we got to socialize and make friends with them, yeah. And so I just thought that wow UM UM students are so friendly and so amazing. But actually like you know like everyone is amazing. <laughs> not not just like people from particular uni, but I think that was my link to UM la, like my first exposure to UM medicine and that time I remember saying that like damn I really want to get into UM because that that really seems like a dream life and after that was A levels and I started preparing for it and blah 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 then I still applied to law actually I applied to law and medicine for UM so that you know I can still live with no regrets and during A levels as well, I I went for a few firm visits, law firm visits, and I realized that law maybe isn't for me because personally, I feel like I don't really like working in an office from nine to five every day. 
I know the hours are much more for medicine, but I really cannot interact with like documents, reading, proofreading a lot, looking at cases of different type of law case. I feel like mm, not really for me. So I got inspired, yes, during law firms by some by some like partners in law. And the tips that they gave about time management and everything I really liked. After I took the UCAT, I had an anxiety moment because I did very badly for the UCAT. Like, no, it wasn't like terrible, but it was bad lah. It was nowhere near the 80th percentile and I thought that you need to get an 80th percentile to get into medicine. So I was really thinking that, oh shit, if I screw up this and I can't even get an interview, and interview is the part that I'm most likely good at because I like yapping. <laughs> so I thought if I couldn't even get an interview, I'm not really doing good for myself, you know. And I prepared so long for the UCAT just to end up with this score. So I was like, shit. Yeah. But I ended up getting an interview. And while preparing for the interview, I had some help from seniors and friends to prepare and read through like the material that they recommended and it turned out that I got the offer so here I am but actually I do have doubts about medicine just that I feel like the doubts aren't enough from, to stop me from pursuing it at this moment and I do think that life will never be uh, like life can never be pre-planned if that makes sense I'll talk about medicine itself and my doubts and hopes in the future for medicine in the next video where i'll be filming it in penang as well tonight yeah if i have the energy but anyways yeah that's my story on medicine on how to get into medical school oh i missed out a very crucial part is that i went for shadowing as well shadowing was so <sighs> such a um amazing experience but also scary because that is the life that i will have in the future and i'll talk about this in the next video as well peace oh and if you are planning to apply to medical school uh, don't don't hesitate to ask any questions in the comments. I'll try to share it like if it's within my knowledge and if I don't then I could ask some of my seniors for you. Ding ding ding. I'll also be filming videos on orientation and getting to the faculty and then like starting med school and stuff if I have time. Okay. Bye. Bye.